Look at those lush coniferous forests and tundra. What a wonderland. You may have mistakenly thought it's Canada, but it's not. It's Antarctica, about 34 million years ago. So what makes Antarctica this frigid today? It turns out a mix of dropping carbon dioxide levels and some tectonic shuffle played a huge role in transforming this ice-free paradise into the frozen continent we know now. About 50 million years ago, CO2 concentrations were sky high, strutting around at around 1,000 to 2,000 parts per million. But as those levels tumbled down, global temps started to drop, paving the way for the mighty ice sheets that later took over Antarctica. While the CO2 dive was happening, tectonic activity was also working its magic. The big split between South America and Antarctica opened up the Drake Passage, which created the Antarctic Circumpolar Current. This powerful current acted like a bouncer, keeping warm air and ocean currents from crashing the Antarctic party and helping keep things rather frosty. If you mix up Australia and Antarctica, you're not that wrong. These two continents used to be one. If you mix up Austria and Australia, it's much worse. By the way, don't fall for the internet myths and memes. There's no help desk in Austria specifically for people who intended to fly to Australia. Now, look at this magnificent Australian pink beach. It's precious and not in a figurative sense. Those mysterious pinkish sands are actually garnet and it's widely used in jewelry. Geologists studied those sands and came to the conclusion that the garnet contained there is older than local mountains. That doesn't make sense, right? In fact, it does. You see, Australia didn't used to be this very detached continent as it is now. Many, many millions of years ago, Australia and Antarctica were part of the supercontinent Gondwana, and glacial erosion released the garnet, which eventually made its way to the beach. These sands formed when South Australia was flat and chill, long before the mountains appeared. Most garnet gets washed away, but this batch has a rich history, tracing back to glacial rocks in the Transantarctic Mountains. So this pink sand comes from an ancient mountain range hidden under Antarctic ice. Not only does Antarctica ice hide gems like garnet, if you look harder, you might find entire buildings. Sounds insane, but this is exactly what a British explorer did. His name is Chris Brown, and he uncovered an entire building beneath the ice. He was traveling to the Pole of Inaccessibility, and it all started with a bummer. Chris and his son had their plane broken. Suddenly, they spotted a lone bust peeking out of the snow. This place was an old meteorological station. Despite freezing conditions, Chris and his son Micah had a blast exploring. Chris is on a mission to conquer all seven earthbound poles of inaccessibility and has tackled five so far. I guess you already know that Antarctica is the largest desert on Earth, much larger than the Sahara or the Gobi. Still, despite being the driest continent on Earth, it boasts a seriously weird waterfall. Nestled in the mesmerizing McMurdo Dry Valleys, it's five stories tall and looks like it's gushing blood. It's even called Blood Falls. It may look outlandish and even frightening, but its nature can be easily explained. The water that creates this crimson cascade was once a salty lake, but over time, it became sealed off from the outside world when glaciers formed on top of it. Now, this ancient water hanging out 1,300 feet below the surface has cranked up its salt levels to three times saltier than the ocean. This salt water is also loaded with iron and gets zero oxygen or sunlight. When the iron-rich water trickles through a crack in the glacier and meets the air, it rusts up, turning dark red. You may have mistakenly heard that no bug species belongs to Antarctica, but it's not exactly true because there's this tiny Antarctic midge living there. Plus, there are some spiders too. Those aren't your average spiders hanging out in the darkest corners of your apartment. Those are critters lurking in the chilly darkness of the Antarctic Ocean floor. These little marine creepers are actually anthropods and can stretch around 20 inches across. As if that wasn't bizarre enough, they also breathe through little holes in their legs. Quick question. What's the color that you associate most with Antarctica? 
I'm sure it's white. That's my association too. However, Antarctica may look like a slice of watermelon. That colorful snow comes courtesy of a tough little algae called Chlamydomonas nivalis. When things start to warm up during the Antarctic summer, these little guys release their vibrant red and green spores, painting the snow in wild and funky colors. But it's best to steer clear because that snow is not just a pretty sight, it's also toxic and definitely not edible. Searching for fossils is always a blast, but when you're in one of the most remote spots on the planet, it gets even more exciting. A diverse team of scientists recently hit the mother load, pulling in over a ton of fossils from ancient marine life, dinosaurs, and birds from the late Cretaceous period, about 71 million years ago. Their adventure kicked off with a flight to South America, followed by a five-day trek through the infamous Drake Passage. Upon reaching Antarctica, they set up camp using helicopters and inflatable boats. You might be thinking, why dig in Antarctica with all that ice? Well, it turns out there are places where rocks pop up, depending on the season. The team went to James Ross Island, located in the Antarctic Peninsula, and they went there during February and March. And that's one of the few parts of Antarctica where in summer, rocks are exposed and those rocks can come from the age of dinosaurs. The expedition was a success as they discovered over a ton of remarkable finds. Next up, the fossils will head to Chile before making their way to Pittsburgh's Carnegie Museum of Natural History. Among their discoveries, they found relics dating back about 71 million years, alongside some around 67 million years old, including plenty of snails clams, and various marine creatures. Yikes! Look at this creepy sea worm. It could live in LA and be a star in a horror movie, but it chooses to call the chilly waters of the Southern Ocean near Antarctica its home. These worms can grow up to 8 inches long and 4 inches wide, but don't let their spooky exterior trick you. Research suggests they might actually be superheroes in disguise playing a vital role in keeping ecosystems buzzing. Now, see that head? It's not really a head, it's just a retractable throat that helps this toothy creature chow down on its meals. Antarctica has many creepy critters to offer. Let me introduce you to the Antarctic Strawberry Feather Star. It's not like Patrick from SpongeBob though, it's more like a deep sea creature straight out of a horror movie. Picture this. 20 wiggly arms, some stretching up to 8 inches, all decked out with these bizarre little bumps. Yikes indeed! Back in 2014, scientists buried 34 seismic monitors in the snow on the Ross Ice Shelf, which is huge. Think of it as an ice slab the size of Texas, just chilling over the Southern Ocean. These clever little machines picked up a nearly non-stop buzzing even though our human ears usually can't catch these low-frequency sounds, scientists have worked their magic and made them audible for us. They even shared the creepy audio online. A glaciologist from the University of Chicago says that if you could hear this vibration, it'd sound like a swarm of cicadas taking over the backyard in late summer. But these glacier explorers weren't trying to capture spooky tunes. They're actually on a mission to monitor the Ross Ice Shelf because things are heating up, literally, and the ice is melting faster than ice cream on a hot day. Ice shelves are like Earth's safety plugs, keeping all that massive ice from surging into the ocean. So what exactly is making all that noise? It's likely just strong winds whipping across ice dunes, creating a kind of natural vibration. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.